you probably don't have that feature for okay. whatever reason. There's going to be something else you can click on. I just haven't used this on an iPad before. Do you have to scroll down with the arrow to mute and unmute, John, on the iPad? No, no that mute and unmute appeared uh, when okay. we were discussing it. It came on the main screen. All righty. I keep on saying waiting. Is that the meeting waiting to start? No, the meeting started. The meeting started. It started at four. So it's it four now. You're going to call John Buccelli? Uh Yes. Um, right. One moment. Are all the members on? Yes, I'm yes. on. Okay. Yes. Is Arthur on? Arthur's here too. Okay, let me call. Well, I think, well, no, is Arthur here yet? No. Oh, yes, he is. Okay. It says yeah. my name on it, Arthur, because it, it, we copied the link, but that's okay. John, I, I see here I'm looking on And you're on mute, Arthur. John Henry, it says swipe left from the active speaker view to display gallery view on an iPad. Sweep left from the active speaker view. I don't have an active speaker view. Listen, mm -hmm. I have joined with video, join with video, which I did. And I'll try this up here. All I'm seeing is a picture of myself. He's on an iPad. Yeah. Video, I'm seeing video up, preview. Up, upper right hand corner, swipe left. Nope. You should All just right. be able to touch it, John. Upper right hand corner, just touch it, and you'll see a drop down screen. He's on an iPad. Yeah, I'm nope. on an iPad also. Hmm. Upper right above everybody else. I'm, I'm, the only thing that I'm seeing, should I knock off video preview? Should I cancel that? Yeah, try that. Nothing happening. Uh, join you, where it says live? you see where it says live custom live streaming service I don't have that you don't have that no nope. should be on your left well you look good John anyway yeah you look good alright let me give Al a call John what was your what was your issue I'm sorry I had to take a phone call Pardon? What was I your only issue? see myself, and I don't see everybody else. Uh, John can't and, get the gallery view, actually, for some reason. And on the uh, screen. Yeah, I've never tried using it on an iPad, so I don't I don't know. There should be a... To get the gallery view, John, just on the left-hand side, click on the very top. Just put your finger on the very top. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. I mean, I, I still have um, in my picture uh, the waiting with the uh, the wheel going around. It's right over my face. Maybe I'll get that. Try to get. No, that's not moving. You know what I do? Try signing, go out, and then come back in. Try that. I click to join where it says uh, iPad, iPhone, or Android device. Okay, open this page in Zoom, open. And I came back, join meeting. Yeah.
What's IRA on twice? You logged in twice, Ira. I don't know why. I have no clue why. No problem. It's back. Arthur, your name is, it's saying Michael Tucker. <laughs> I shared my link with them because he, he needed the link. So I don't know what I did, Ashley, but I just with, shared the link. With Tony's. Are you, uh, Michael? Yeah. As long as you hear me, that's fine. Okay. I've got Your Al pictures on, on there. So uh, um, ready to stop the meeting. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Meeting of the Revere Zoning Board of Appeals will now come to order. Roll call, please. Mr. Pacilli is here. Yes. Mr. D'Angelo is absent. Mr. Lopes. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Pelton. Yes. Yes. Mr. Tucker. Here. The quorum is present. First order of business is application o, A2001, Jose and Basilio Lara, relative to 24 Newbury Street, appeal of the decision of the building inspector. I have uh, communicated with Larry Simeone. He was supposed to send me a letter withdrawing that application. The email has not come in. I recommend that we table this one more time. There's a motion to table. Roll call. But to continue, I'm sorry. To continue. Mr. Pichilli, this is the continue, yes? Uh, yes, Mr. Pacilli. Mr. D'Angelo is absent. Mr. Lopes? Yes. Yes. Mr. Pelton? Yes. Yes, and Mr. Tucker? Yes. Yes, this is continued to the meeting of June 29th, if that's, if we have no objections. Can we take calendar item number 20-11 next? Yes. Thank you. This is the applicate A2011 is the application of Post Road Realty LLC, 11 Agunqua Road, Fairfield, Connecticut, requesting a variance, uh, requesting extension, a six month extension uh, of City Revere Zoning Board of Appeals variance A1919 to enable the appellant to construct a 12 story, 236 residential unit apartment and associated amenities, including a coffee shop and exercise facility on lot two at 656 Ocean Avenue in Revere. Hey, David, do you just want to explain the reason why? I think that one wasn't is, mine. Uh, <laughs> that might be Corey's. Yes, yes, this is actually right, Corey. Um, one of mine. Um, I, projects like this, they, they are uh, um, uh, quite involved and quite detailed with uh, different permits needed from uh, the state. Uh, I, also with this being on a state highway, I've uh, been working closely to uh, uh, get some of those permits in place as well. It's just a, a, a timely process, um, uh, time consuming process. And uh, though the um, client is getting very close to pooling their building permit to uh, activate this variance, just out of an abundance of caution, they have uh, requested that uh, we appear before you and request uh, uh, this, this extension. Uh, otherwise, the project is, is moving forward uh, well and, and, and expect to uh, have them in the ground very soon. Is there any one else wish to speak? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Bob O'Brien. I live at 10 Ocean Avenue. I'm Director of Economic Development for the City of Revere. And I would stand in support of this extension. I think uh, David uh, Jackowitz is here for virtually the same request for another project in Waterfront Square. I think in both cases, as Corey has indicated, these are complicated projects that take quite some time. They have been further delayed by 
the uh, whole COVID uh, virus uh, issue, which has delayed some financing issues. Um, I do believe also that they are probably told as a result of the COVID uh, emergency declaration of the governor, but I believe that they are asking for an extension officially uh, just to support one that they already have administratively. Uh, we very much support that and we support your approval of both applications. Okay. Michael? Yes? In uh, David's case, and I'm not sure if Corey also, uh, David is requesting a six month extension of the variance beyond the date of the expiration of Governor Baker's state of emergency order. I'm not sure if Corey is asking for the same thing. Uh, we, don't, we don't think that's necessary in our case. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Ira Novoselsky. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, just to make this official, uh, this being in my ward, I'm Ira Novoselsky, 53 Dohon Street, Ward 2 Counselor. Uh, this is in my ward and along uh, Ocean Avenue, and uh, we have no objections to this uh, extension. Thank you. Okay. I would also add that our support would extend to either version of the extension beyond the um, emergency order or within the emergency order, either are fine with us. Okay, can we take a roll call? One moment. Al, you're still there? Yeah. Motion okay. to approve the extension. Question comes on uh, granting the relief requested by the appellant. Mr. Pacilli? Yes. Yes. Mr. D'Angelo is absent. Mr. Lopes? Yes. Yes. Mr. Pelton? Yes. Yes. And Mr. Tucker? Yes. This is granted. David, what is your the title of your company? The City of Boston right? Development. It's 646, right down the street, 646 Ocean Ave. It's the third item on the agenda, Mr. One moment. Okay, so that's 2007. This is a 2007 BC Boston Development LLC, 141 Tremont Street, third floor, Boston, requesting a six month extension of City Revere Zoning Board of Appeals, variance A1903, to enable the appellant to construct a seven story mixed use residential retail and restaurant use in the Wonderland Transit Oriented Development District at 646 Ocean Avenue, Revere. And we have the members, I've also received the communication from David and David is requesting a six month extension beyond the date of the expiration of Governor Baker's state of emergency order. The applicant? That's correct. That's okay. correct. <clears throat> Can we have a roll call please? Do you wanna take proponents yeah. and opponents? Oh, I'm sorry, proponents, Ira? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Once again, um, Ira Novoselsky, 53 Dahon Street, Ward 2 Counselor. This also is in my uh, in my ward, uh, and uh, we have no objection to this extension. Thank and you. Bob O'Brien, 10 Ocean Avenue, Director of Economic Development. I join with the Counselor in support of this uh, ZBA approval of this petition. Okay, any other proponents? Hearing none, I'll close that side of hearing. Any opponents? Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Any members wish to speak? Then I would ask that this go for a roll call. Al, this is the proposal at uh, 646 Ocean Avenue uh, requesting a six month extension. Okay. Yes? Yes. That's yes. Mr. Bacilli? Yes. Mr. D'Angelo is absent. Mr. Lopes? Yes. Yes, Mr. Pelton. Yes. Yes, and Mr. Tucker. Yes. Yes, this is granted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, Ira and Bob, thanks very much. Take care and stay healthy, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We turn to the regular order of business.
Yes, please. Uh, the next application is application A2003. This is the application of Randolph Taylor, 183 Cushman Avenue, Revere, requesting front and side yard setback variances to enable the appellant to construct a 16 foot wide by 24 foot long garage with a second story addition of the proposed garage uh, and an existing family dwelling on lot 14 at 183 Cushman Avenue. Is the proponent here? Is the applicant here? I did speak to the ward counselor who had a lengthy discussion with the gentleman. I believe that's why we requested a continuance um, so that he could have the opportunity to speak to the ward counselor who says he has no problem with this. Um, I would ask if there's any other proponents. Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Any opponents? Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Any members wish to speak? John, we might as well take it right up and um, vote on it. Okay. Okay, The uh, this is uh, Randolph Taylor at uh, on uh, 183 Cushman Avenue requesting uh, front and side yard setbacks. How do you vote, Al? Yes. Yes. Mr. Pacilli votes yes. Mr. D'Angelo is absent. Mr. Lopes? Yes. Yes. Mr. Pelton? Yes. Yes. And Mr. Tucker? Yes. Yes, this is granted. Three, seven. Granted. Ten. Um, the next application before the board is application A2008. This is the application of Eastern Equity Partners LLC 1040, 1048 North Shore Revere, requesting a variance of uh, Title 17, 1724, 1728, Section 1724010. 1724010Q, 1728020 of the revised ordinance of City Revere, minimum lot size, frontage, side yard, rear yard, front yard setback, floor area ratio, parking, maximum height to enable the appellant to construct. And this is uh, based on the original filing of a four story mixed use development, which has been now identified by the uh, council for the appellant as a typo. So what is being requested is a five-story mixed-use development consisting of one commercial unit and 32 residential units on lot 77 at 207, 209 Shirley Avenue in Revere. Good afternoon, board members. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Corey Rhodes. I'm an attorney with the Ambrosio Brown LLP, Fortson Proctor Avenue in Revere. Uh, I, I represent the petitioner in this matter. Uh, uh, I'm happy to... Uh, uh, kind of pose this as bringing the bagel bin back to Shirley Avenue. It's been a, uh, a year since the fire there that uh, removed uh, the, the kind of long-standing fixture in the neighborhood. Uh, and this is a proposal to get them back uh, to this location. Um, uh, I'm new, frozen here. Uh, yeah, yeah. building. Is everything uh, going all right? I can you can continue. Okay. Continue. You're being seen perfect. A, uh, a new uh, five-story uh, mixed-use building. So uh, the bagel bin would be on the uh, ground floor. Uh, and there are uh, three uh, levels above that. And then on uh, the fifth level uh, of, the, of the structure, it is just two units that are uh, pushed from the uh, edge of the property. You, you basically can't even see them um, uh, if, if at all possible. I... Uh, uh, I'd be happy to share some renderings, but it doesn't look like uh, I have that function here. Um, these are uh, micro units, uh, to say at least they're uh, approximately 450 square feet uh, for the residential units, um, uh, the, the studio apartments. Uh, just a good new building um, uh, 
on this property that has uh, solely been commercial. So not getting rid of, uh, of any um, you know, single family homes or, or really homes of long-term residents, anything like that. It's bringing new uh, mixed use uh, investment to the city, keeping that commercial activation um, uh, of the property. Uh, there are going to be 11 parking spaces uh, in the back. Uh, in our conversations with the city, they would like to see these be specifically dedicated to the commercial use of the property uh, and to um, uh, basically uh, have the residential um, units be restricted from having any cars at this property. This is something that the uh, developer has utilized very effectively at his other properties um, uh, and where this is just steps away from the uh, MBTA blue line. We have few, few doubts that, that uh, a car is really necessary at this spot at all. And that is not what these properties are gonna be marketed for. Um, we ask that you support these projects. Uh, uh, this project particularly, uh, it's, it's been a, a burned out building. Um, um, and I think the neighborhood uh, and, and, and really everyone involved should be very happy to see that uh, uh, be transformed in the bagel bin to come back to uh, Shirley Avenue. Thank you. Well, there, Mr. Mr. Tucker, purple? there's, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was just saying uh, one resident have actually two residents have their hands raised. I don't know okay. if they're proponents or opponents though. All righty. Uh, I'll allow on. them to speak. Um, I'm first, a ward councillor, if it was okay. to speak. Mr. Chairman, uh, at this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait, uh, yield my time, and let let everybody else speak first, and then I'll speak afterwards. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any proponents? Anyone in favor of the property? Yes, Mr. I'm Chairman. Go ahead, Bob. May I continue. Um, yes. My name is Robert O'Brien. I live at 10 Ocean Avenue and I'm Director of Economic, for the Economic Development for the City of Revere. And I stand in support of ZBA approval of the variances for this project. We have submitted a letter to the ZBA to that effect, which addressed all three of the Shirley Avenue projects, mixed use projects being proposed today. I can, if you wish, speak to all of them since the basic logic of our support applies equally to all three. Uh, if that's okay, it might be more efficient when we come to the other two, but I'll defer to you, Mr. Chairman. That's fine. That's okay. uh, in that event, I, I would just say, first of all, that our position with regard to these variances is consistent with the positions we have taken on previous projects within recent months in Shirley Avenue that also applied for similar variances. Uh, to it, uh, uh, reduced setbacks, uh, increased FAR, reduced parking in particular. Um, I would uh, say that the reason that we supported the other projects variances as this one is the only way that we can get kind of mixed use development on Shirley Avenue that the city and others desire is to have relaxation from current zoning. The current zoning uh, has gotten us what we have had in the past, which is virtually no private development on Shirley Avenue. So the only mechanism, unless and until the zoning is changed, which is being considered by the city now, but unless and until that happens, the only way we will get private development on Shirley Avenue is to allow these types of variances. Um, I think, the city has devoted a great deal of time in my early years in this project, in this position, I should say, and before in investing a lot of public funds in the improvement of the project that was done in concert with our partners in the not-for-profit community, particularly the neighborhood developers, and with the support of public funding through the transformative uh, neighborhood initiative, as well as mass works. Uh, the goal in part of that investment and that investment of time was to encourage private development in Shirley Avenue. Uh, that began to happen with the redevelopment of the synagogue site, which we owe a debt of gratitude to our ward counselor, who was a leader in that regard. But after that was done, there was other private development that was allowed to happen because of variances 
granted previously. This is a continuation of that trend. And I think the trend toward private development in the Shirley Avenue district and in Revere generally is a very positive one. I think the type of development that is being allowed here is a mix of uses, which preserves the commercial character, particularly of the early few blocks of Shirley Avenue, and also adds residential development above that. All of these projects would not be allowed were they are not for a relaxation of the parking requirements because parking at the ground floor level would displace precisely the kind of revitalized commercial uh, spaces that these projects are providing and that otherwise would not be possible. So we think it is justified in this case and in other cases in Shirley Avenue because it's the only way we can get what we all want to have happen in terms of increased mixed use development. The real issue in this case, uh, are, well, there, there are two actually. Uh, there is no variance being requested for height. Nonetheless, um, the Ward Councilor and others have long-standing concerns about too much height on Shirley Avenue. And to that, for that reason, the developer has proposed a significant setback on the project now under consideration at 207, so that virtually the fifth floor is not visible from the street. And in the case of the other project that is being built close to or at the allowed height of 50 feet, it is designed with a, um, a cornice line at the fourth floor level and a setback in terms of a mansard roof, which blends away from that. Again, re reducing its visibility from the street. Those do not involve uh, the need for any variances since they're within the allowable height, but they are meant to mitigate the effect of that height at the street level. What is required and is being asked for here is significant reduction of the parking requirements, particularly for the residential units. Uh, in fact, for all practical purposes, with the exception of some residential spaces being devoted to shared use vehicles, there will be no individual parking on site for any of them. Um, we are confident that this developer can and will keep the commitment that there be no residential parking for any of these projects. In the first place, I think this is a quintessentially transit oriented development area, well served obviously by the green line, which is practically adjacent to this site and also to the site at 194, but it's also well served by local bus lines. It will be the site of blue bike stations that are being now introduced in Revere. It is generally pedestrian access to a number of other sites in the area. So we think it is exceptionally well served in terms of the transit oriented development site. We would also add that most of the units that are being proposed are studio apartments. Of the 95 new residential units that will be created, 91 are studio units, which tend to have poor automobile ownership uh, profiles in, in any event. But perhaps most importantly, the developer in this case has made the unequivocal commitment, which should be part of any zoning board of approval uh, of the zoning requirement, that no units will be leased to people who own vehicles. Uh, I might add that the developer has made a similar commitment in other projects elsewhere in the city that has been reviewed and approved by the Zoning Board of Appeal with the support of the city administration. Um, this developer is, I think, capable of making and standing behind that commitment. And with that combination, I think instead of being a problem, the lack of resident parking actually contributes to the solution because it will not bring vehicles into the neighborhood that have no place to go. Indeed, it will not bring uh, vehicles into the com community at all, which we think is very preferable. Finally, we would say, although this is not an issue that relates directly to the jurisdiction of the ZBA, uh, this is a, these are very timely projects in terms of the 
municipal finances of the city and they will provide between them in excess of $450,000 of fees and permits in addition to increased property taxes and over $200,000 of that will be in contributions to the Community Investment Trust Fund, which will be devoted to commun uh, community improvements uh, within the Ward 2 environment. And uh, Councilor Novoselsky has been very effective at spending similar funds and similar projects. And I think that can make a great contribution to the vitality of the Shirley Avenue district. For all of these reasons, we support your approval of the variances for this property and for the other two that are being heard today. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? We have, uh, Michael, we have a letter to the record from David Massey. Uh, 9 to Hone Street in support of this uh, proposal. Okay, thank you. Any other proponents? Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Wait. Any opponents? Mr. Tucker, Mr. there's three attendees that have their hands raised. Would you like me to allow them to talk? I do not, I can't tell if they're proponents or opponents until um, we let them speak. Okay. Okay. I'll just, I'm just going to go in order as they appear on my participants list. First one is Laurel Holmes. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Lore Holmes. That's L-O-R Holmes. I live at 243 Campbell Ave since 2006. Uh, this is the first time I've uh, participated in a ZBA meeting. It's very interesting to learn about all these projects. Um, another hat that I wear besides being a concerned community resident is that I have a background in both housing development and commercial, commercial development. development. I take a great interest in seeing all the activity that is coming towards Philly Ave and our community. And I think that a lot of really good, a lot of good things come from all that. I also uh, uh, share the sentiment that the city can work to use all the resources it can get right now. And uh, there's, there's lots of good community uses to be had for them. I don't know whether I'm a proponent or an opponent these projects and the reason is because I only just heard about them uh, maybe two weeks ago, a week or two ago. Um, and what concerns me about it, it's, my question is more of a, a concern about process. Um, I, I was involved in development work in the city of Boston and the city of Chelsea for many, many, many years. And when a developer was coming into a community, there were always uh, multiple opportunities for the community to meet the developers, hear what the plans are, have some give and take, have questions answered. Um, and uh, unless I've been really under more of a rock than quarantine had put me, um, I, I don't think there's been that kind of process here and I don't know how that generally works in Revere. So that would be part A and I'll just ask my question and then I can be muted again and you guys can respond. Um, if we could have um, some, a couple of meetings with concerned people from the community, I think it'd be great just to hear more, learn more about the projects, get a chance to ask questions, for example, about the parking. Um, and, you know, uh, I appreciate that it's a transit centered design. I know that that's what's happening right now and that's all the rage. I understand there's some evidence on uh, for agreeing not to rent to people, but I'm wondering, does that prevent anybody from getting a car after they after they move into the property? Um, uh, just questions about, in general, what is the impact on the community besides bringing some money into the uh, community trust fund, which is great. I don't know who administers that or how decisions get made about that either, but. I would just like to advocate for a little bit more community participation and, and a chance for residents to learn more about all these projects before approved variances for them. Thank you. Thank you. I see the next person that raised their hand. Sure, the next one, uh, the name on it is listed as Hansi. I'm going to allow this person to speak, allowed to talk. Is there an address for Hansi? She hasn't spoken yet. 
Is that just one name, H-A-N-Z-I? H-A-N-S-I. Hansi, you're available to speak if you'd like to speak as a proponent or an opponent. He's one of the owners of the bagel bin, guys. Thank you. I will. Does he want to speak? Is a hands raised? So I can't tell. Probably on mute. Hansi, speak up. Oh. <laughs> Here he is. Hello. I hear a vague hello. Yeah, I can't. Can we take the next person and maybe yeah, he can the get next better person. I'm going to mute Hansi. Next person is Deborah Bachetti. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Could you okay. state your name Hi. and address for the record? Sure. My name is Deborah Bochetti and my husband, Michael, we own One Or Square right next to the bagel bin. And we've been longtime owners of that building for nearly 30 years. Uh, we've seen, you know, Revere, Shirley Avenue, um, you know, slowly try to creep upwards. And uh, we're very thrilled to see this project uh, being proposed for the bagel bin and further down Shirley Avenue. And we have absolutely no objections. We think it's going to be a very positive change uh, for Shirley Ave and the entire neighborhood. Okay, thank you. So thank I'll put you. this down as a proponent. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wish to speak? Ann Steinman, I'm going to allow to talk. Okay. Hi, um, I live at um, 45 Thornton Street. Let's make sure you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, this, this is not the Thornton Street project, I don't think. No, but, no, but I, I live in, um, I'm still a member over here. I'm still a member of the community. I still Okay, if you wish to speak for this project, you have the right to, but we just wanted to make sure that you knew where we were on the calendar. Yes, I, yes, I do know that you're, uh, what the old bagel bin is. I mean, I am happy that something's being done to bring the bagel bin back, but I do have a, con I do have a concern about the, um, Studio, studio apartments. Um, it's my understanding that oh, I can answer a question that um, are, are any of them being allowed for um, low income residents? I, it's my understanding that, that, that none of the provisions were allowed for low income. And especially with the, with the, you know, the crisis going on right now with COVID and everything, um, if we're going to have more people in the neighborhood, I don't want, I don't want to bring in just you know, affluent people. Um, I think there needs to be some, something for people who are not as well off. And, and, and also, I, I wish there would have been more time for all three of these properties to, for the community to um, hear about and, and to, to get involved and to have questions asked. And i also like to reiterate the, uh, the concern that one of the people before me has spoken about what happens when someone gets a, a vehicle or a motorcycle. Um, yeah, how is it going to be enforced? Are they going to still be able to live there? What's going to happen? You know, uh, because parking is it's a very congested area on Shirley Ave, and I'm concerned about how the, you know the parking situation is going to affect everybody. So, any any answer um, about any of that? Mr. Chairman, well, I can. I can we'll, we'll continue on with the proponents and opponents, and then if the applicant wishes to speak, they, they may do so. Um, so, is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Uh, yes, Mr. Tucker. Um, Hansi Desi has his hand raised again. He's not, he's in it as a different name. So let's see if this works. This okay. Time. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Please yeah. state your name and address for the record. Hi, uh, my name is Hansi Vladesi. I live at uh, 69 Elm Street in Malden. I'm here with my father, George Vladesi. A lot of people might not uh, might know who we are. We run the Bagel Bin Deli. Uh, we, uh, the rebuilding process that uh, we promised a year ago after the fire is actually happening right now. And uh, Jamie's actually helping us out to do this. Um, we get in hundreds of messages from uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, stating when we can come back. And so I just want to let everybody know that we are trying very hard to come back to Revere and we miss the town a lot. Uh, we have a current store in Topsfield. Uh, if you haven't come, if you haven't seen it, please come down, check it out. Uh, for those who might not know who we are, uh, my father owned the business for 20 years, the bagel bin, the burned out building that 
is on the end of the Shirley Ave right now. Uh, he made an icon on that street and we've had uh, presidential candidates come there and governors and senators. And this, the reason why was because my father had an understanding of what hospitality was. It was to bring a community together and to treat everybody like a family. And he always taught me that hard work and success uh, would lead to, uh, a lot of hard work would lead to success. Um, another person who does work very hard, and I, I saw this with my own eyes, was Jamie. He would be there at 5 a.m. and I would serve him the first coffee over there. So I know he works hard. And so that's why we are proponents of this project because we know Jamie has done amazing work in this community already. And uh, we've seen the community change in just a few months. Uh, regarding the parking, in my perspective, uh, this will not be an issue because the T-Station is so close and uh, so many ride-sharing apps now uh, are used. So um, I don't believe that would be a problem. I, we've seen it in our store. Like a lot of people are getting Uber Eats and it's been uh, very popular right now. So that means a lot of people are not traveling to the store. They, they want somebody to pick it up and deliver it to them at their house. So this just shows me that ride sharing apps are gonna be used more often in the future. Uh, so with, uh, with that being said, we have total faith in Jamie to do an amazing job here. Uh, hopefully we can do this as quick as possible so we can uh, serve some amazing food uh, to the app. Hey, thank you very much. Ashley, is there anyone else that has their hand raised? Yes, there's a Ronald B. Hogan. I'm going to allow him to speak now. Can you guys hear me? Yes, please state your name and address for the record. Yeah, my name is Ron Hogan. I'm the property owner of 173 Shirley Ave, which is a laundromat uh, located across the street from the old St. Jean Credit Union. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on to speak in, in, uh, in support of the proposal for uh, both the, the site of the Bagel Bin and I know later in the agenda, the, the one of the old, uh, the old credit union. I've owned the property on Shirley Ave for about 10 years. Um, and, and and over the course of the 10 years, I'd say for the first seven or eight years, I didn't see a whole lot of interest from anybody wanting to invest money in Shirley Ave. Uh, I took a chance. I spent a lot of money on my property. And I'm really pleased to see folks willing to put the kind of money into developing on Shirley Ave that, uh, that Mr. Russo appears to be willing to do. Uh, I met Mr. Russo when I got notification that he was planning on building. Otherwise, just press pound. Those who are not participating, please silence. Please Put your microphone on silence. Who's Iron? Okay, sorry about that. You may continue. So, so I met Mr. Russo when I got notification that he was planning on building on the empty parking lot next to my store. And I had some concerns. Uh, I had, uh, through the Wood Council, was put in contact with Mr. Russo. And and I got to tell you, he was completely responsive to the things that, that I had concerns about, even though he had already been granted the variances that he needed to, to go ahead and do the building. He was willing to, to make some changes to, to work with me on some of the things that I had. So, you know, I tell you that it's it's easy when things are good to lose sight of the fact that there aren't a lot of developers willing to to put the kind of money that it takes to develop today into projects. Um, I, I do, uh, you know, I do um, have a lot of faith in the fact that these micro units do not put the type of pressure on parking. And, and I guess you should realize that as a property owner there, if I were concerned about parking, I'd be on the other side of this issue telling you because quite frankly, my business relies upon it. And I think the key to both proposals is the fact that these appeal to a market at 400 square feet a unit that really is not, are not folks that are gonna put pressure on parking in the area. So I'm speaking in support for both projects um, that are before you today. Thank you. Are there anyone else that raise a hand? Doc Cohen want to speak on favor? Jeff, is there anyone else that's not on the not on the attendees list? There appears to be a couple of counselors, and um, I don't it, and um, and a woman that's listed as Ira yeah. has her hand uh, raised. Yeah, uh, Jan Dumas. Yeah, okay, so I will mute. Also, Jeff Cohen is up in the upper right. Dr. Cohen. Yes. Hello. Can Anybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm actually here for the 180 Shirley Ave. I think it's a little a little bit, but I suppose I could talk now. Well, let's talk about the project that's on the calendar right now. So. Okay. I'll wait then. Thank okay. you very much. Um, 
I want to hear about, I want to talk about that project. Thank you very much, Ira, for Who was sharing this speaking? Huh? Hi. Your name and address Jan, for the record, please. Jan Dumas, 50 Walnut Avenue. Sorry, I keep forgetting that everyone knows me. Um, I'm very concerned about this property. Um, I don't have as much faith as the rest of you that no one will bring a car. I'm also concerned since we don't have an Airbnb policy in the city, how many of these units are gonna be rented by people hoping to turn them into a second income by renting them to people who are only gonna be here for a short period of time? And are you truly talking about renting to people who specifically are only going to be here for a year or two? I've been in this neighborhood for over a decade and I would like to surround myself with people who want to make the Shirley Avenue neighborhood their permanent home, not a place to just throw a suitcase for a couple of months. I don't think that's good for the neighborhood. And I don't want to lose the beauty and multiculturalism that is the Shirley Avenue neighborhood by filling it with a bunch of short term rentals for people who aren't gonna love the neighborhood the way I do. I don't wanna lose that beauty. I don't want it to become sort of just a rubber stamp of any other neighborhood or a place where people are say, only staying until they finish college or only staying for a few months as a vacation. I'm really worried about those things. And, and I don't know make me comfortable somehow but right now i'm not at all comfortable with any studio apartments that are going to be for transient rentals okay thank you for speaking uh, the next person that wishes to speak on the project anybody else but two is there anyone else that wish to speak on the project I guess now it's me, Mr. Chairman, if nobody else okay. does. No, that's not just you. It's also Tony Zambiro. Oh, okay. No, I'll let you go, Counselor. How's the yield? Okay, thank you. So um, I don't often come to speak uh, before uh, Board of Appeals meetings, although I am the zoning chairman uh, for the City Council Subcommittee. Uh, I'm thrilled to come here to speak tonight on the uh, revitalization of uh, Shirley Ave. Uh, can everybody hear me? I know I'm having some internet connection. Problems. Oh, you're fine, Tony. Oh, great. Because it's telling me that I've got an unstable connection. Uh, I apologize. So a few things. Obviously, I'm, I'm here to speak in favor, in favor of the bagel bin. Uh, certainly, a, certainly an institution uh, for the city, and I, I think I helped bring some of the uh, some of the uh, high-profile people like uh, Scott Brown, the governor, John McCain. Many, many people come came to the bagel bin. But more importantly, uh, in the realm of the revitalization of uh, Shirley Ave, I don't think any developer has done more not just for the revitalization of Shirley Ave, but neighborhoods all across the city uh, than Jamie Russo. Uh, he has a track record. That's what I stand behind. I stand behind track records. I watch what developers do. So to get me to speak in favor of that, I know obviously the administration's in favor of it because this is the revitalization of Revere. And, and Shirley Ave has been a big part of it. Now I know there's there's a little uh, slight uh, concern about the height. I don't I don't share that concern, but nevertheless I I can appreciate other people's concerns. When we get to parking, there is no more of a transit-oriented development than this project right here. You can throw a rock, it's, it's steps away from the blue line, steps away from public transportation. 
the, the, the certain essence of, of transit-oriented development. I, I've been around long enough to remember when it was kicked off. And it, uh, transitory development was kicked off at Revere Beach, for those of you who were around back those days, with the former governor, who I don't want to mention because uh, I just don't, I don't have anything good to say. But uh, bottom line is that was a good, that was a good thing, transitory development. And uh, I, I'll just point to the, the Home Street project and, and what that did to that disgusting lot on the corner there and how that turned it into a magnificent building and, and uh, uh, the main reason was because it was uh, it was it steps away from a uh, steps away from a, uh, a train station and uh, that's how you get uh, that's how you that's how you create a neighborhood like this and uh, there are certain things that you have to do in order to have developers like this invest so much money, you have to allow them to make enough money to, to, to fund the project and come out of it not in the hole. Sometimes that means that we have to bend a little bit. In this project, I don't see any real concerns. Uh, of course, the parking is, 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 is what it is. These are, these are small units and they're not gonna require any, and, and you've got to treat it as transit or interval development and you're bringing a business back that is is truly a you know an icon for the community and we all want the bagel bin back on shirley ave and uh, we want to we want a, a vibrant shirley ave which we have coming with with all these fantastic projects and and the great veterans building uh was a was a big asset uh to the uh to the community, and, and I think that was the same height as we're talking here. Uh, nevertheless, the point is that uh, I have to back a developer that has a proven track record, that does what he says he's going to do, and makes neighborhoods better. And uh, so I am as strong a proponent as anyone could possibly be for this project. Thank you. Michael, you got a young lady who wants to speak. Okay, um, please state your name and address for the record. You have to take the mic off. You're on mute. There you go. Hi, my name is Fatsu Drame. I live on 30 Park Avenue, Rivia. What, what was that? 30 Park Avenue. You got it? I am um, not speaking for or against um, this project. I'm not against it. I know that we have housing demand in Rivia and that it's, it's nice to see um, a developer uh, trying to fill those needs. Uh, but I also wanted, uh, my concern is has to um, deal with some of the concerns that um, residents of Shirley Earth are um, concerned about. Um, Basically, we know that these um, apartments will basically fill the demand for housing in the city, but we also know that um, Rivia demographic, most of the people that live in Rivia would not be able to afford these apartments. So that is one thing. Um, so I think that we, going forward in the future, we have to basically try to balance the demand and the supply and the benefits to the community. So I am grateful that um, Ira um, informed us about what is going on. Uh, we all know that these projects are going on, but I would like to appeal to the zoning um, committee that for future projects like this, that uh, residents that live in those neighborhood or even Riviera residents need to be aware of these projects at the initial uh, submission of these projects so that people can have their voices and their concerns heard and that they can also advocate for things that will benefit the community. So that is just something that I would like to uh, throw out there. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other, anyone else wish to speak? Mr. Chairman, I guess it's me. Okay. 
I'm sorry. I don't know. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. two other hands. Sorry. There's two other hands that just raised. Kristen Janjar him, is next. Let him go. Mr. Chairman, can we discern what, if these people are speaking as proponents or opponents? Okay. I mean, both of those okay. did not declare what they were, but. I have a section referred to now as unknown position. Okay. Uh, Hi, this is Kristen Janjar. Can you hear me? Hi. No. Uh, I live over at 67 Campbell Ave. What's the name? I would Kristen Janjar, J-A-N-J-A-R. I would consider myself an opponent to this. However, I'm not an opponent to the bagel bin itself. I love the bagel bin and I would love to have them back, but I'm not sure that we need four stories above the bagel bin just to get the bagel bin back. Um, I do, first of all, wanna make sure that we uh, address the idea that there's just slight concerns or no real concerns um, that's being stated by uh, Mr. Zambudo. I, I don't appreciate that, that these are just not real concerns because they're not his concerns. Um, but anyway, I think there are concerns about this and other developments. I think there are three of them on the agenda tonight that are all in the Shirley Ave neighborhood. Um, yes, you can rent to somebody that doesn't own a vehicle, but it doesn't mean that they don't have friends and family there or even people living with them that all have vehicles. Um, and that's just more cars that are congesting the neighborhood. Uh, yes, there was definitely work to revitalize this neighborhood that TND was part of. I'm on the TND board. Um, but that was also in conjunction with affordable housing, which I think has been mentioned. And um, I appreciate that Mr. Russo is interested in developing a whole bunch of things in our neighborhood, but I don't know that he's even come close to developing anything that is affordable housing for anybody who currently lives in the neighborhood, um, as Fatou just talked about. So I think that we need to think about that. Um, also, I worry that sort of we're losing the soul of our neighborhood. We're losing green space. We don't have the in investment in infrastructure that I think we could really use. Um, I know that these uh, properties, when they're built, some funding goes into some neighborhood funds, um, but I'm not sure that those get spent necessarily the way we would want them to be. And I'm not sure that that is really enough to make the neighborhood um, as good as it could be. And uh, I worry about that. I don't think we need you know, 10 five-story buildings within a three-block period where we're at one or two stories for most of that area right now. Um, and I worry about all the variances to zoning. Clearly, that's what you guys do. But like uh, Mr. O'Brien mentioned, um, right now, this area is zoned in a particular way, and we don't change the zoning. We just keep um, accepting all these variances to zonings, which to me seems a little strange. So it seems like we should change the zoning if that's the, the case. But um, again, that would seemed to me a need for a bigger conversation with more people in the neighborhood. So yes, I appreciate revitalization, but I'm not sure that it means five stories of really expensive small apartments, which are eventually going to bring a lot of people, a lot of cars, maybe people that aren't invested in the neighborhood and not much else to the neighborhood. I'd love to have the bagel bin back anytime. That'd be great. Thanks. Could I get your address one more time? Uh, 67 Campbell Avenue, that's where we live, but we also own property at 70 Thornton Street, so I'm here for both uh, discussions today. Thank you. No other, other hands raised? No, Mr. Tucker. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Board Councilor. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Chairman, thank you, uh, you and the board members and all the folks that are on. It's great to see such a the community gathering here on Zoom. But uh, just, I wanna just fill in a few issues that people brought up. Um, we did not have a community meeting, which uh, I met with their, their uh, legal folks uh, about three weeks ago. And we did plan on having one, but because of the COVID, we could not meet together. So my alternate plan was to send out emails to um, all my constituents in the neighborhood, which I did. Uh, about 125 went out and I got about 30 different um, comments now. So that, that's why, just so you know, that, that's why we didn't have a actual community meeting. So to mention a TOD now, realize we, we have a uh, transit oriented development 
down on Ocean Avenue. Shirley Ave actually is not a TOD, it's just a adjacent to it. You know, so they're they're trying to tie everything in together, which I have no problem with. I've been very pro developments for the last 10 years that we've started to build all these projects around the neighborhood. And many of the pr uh, projects are in Ward 2, Shaw's Ocean Ave on one side of Ocean Ave. Uh, the south side of Ocean Ave is Ward 1, so that's not, you know, my, my ward. Uh, one of the key issues that everybody I heard from, and just so you know, Mr. Tucker, I emailed you uh, comments uh, of concerns to 13 different uh, emails I sent to your revere.org and your private uh, contest site uh, this, early this afternoon. So uh, these folks had a large concern of the parking and everybody I've spoken to and even some of the folks tonight, parking, parking, parking. Now, just to clarify, the bagel bin, that's number one where we are. 11 spaces, 32 units. My only concern there was the height. Now, height is not part of the variance that we're looking for today because they're just about meeting the minimum height of 50 feet with that one half a floor that they have on the fourth floor. I have no problem with that. And I, and I, I tried to work with, the, uh, with Jamie Russo and uh, uh, he was not very cooperative in that issue to uh, remove that fifth floor. So with that, here I am. It's on the proponent side, but I'm just giving you my concerns. And you know, of course, we do want to see the bagel bin back. And uh, with, everybody's very supportive of them uh, to come back. So with that, that's my, uh, that's my piece for the bagel bin. So uh, I will talk uh, the other two issues as they come up, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, just for clarification, I got nothing on the on my emails. So if you want to forward them to me to the revere.org, that'll be great because I don't have the Comcast working, um, but the revere.org is an active email. Right, I, I know that it's uh, probably in uh, in cyber heaven right now because I know they're changing the whole uh, service system. It's, it's revere.org, okay. so we'll get them to you. Thank All right, you. thank you. Is there anyone else that wish to speak? Hearing none, any members? I'm sorry, Ralph DeChico just raised his hand. Okay. Proponent or opponent? Ralph, please state your name and address for the record and state Ralph if you're DeChico, a proponent Commission or opponent. Disabilities. Uh, proponent, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Uh, just two points, one point for you, Mr. Tucker. The email server is having some problems because of the transforming today. Secondly, one point that I wanted to make that I believe might put some people at ease, um, because it's a, a transit orient thing, none of these buildings are going to, because of the resident parking, none of these buildings are going to be able to get resident parking stickers. So that should be that should be something that should be pointed out. So these people are going to be rented apartments, so that's going to be at ease. So if anybody has a vehicle, they're not going to be able to get a resident parking uh, sticker for their vehicle, so they're not going to be able to have overnight parking. So, so that's one thing that should be pointed out. And they will not also also will not be able to have visitor stickers, uh, placards for those for those. With us now. So, so that's what I just. Oh, you're still there. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So that you should that should put some of these. Uh, I know it. Extra vehicles do. coming into the area. Um. So that 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 that's a that's one thing that I just wanted to point out. Mr. Thank Tucker, you. if I may, if I may, uh, ahead, uh, two two more items uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, uh, Fatu mentioned affordable housing. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot make these developers put in affordable housing. We have to get someone that gets a lot of grants and these people are doing all private funding. So unfortunately, we will not be able to get these developers to put in affordable housing. I know TND does it. They're doing it down on Revere Street. They'll be doing it at Suffolk Downs. And I know they did it at 525 Beach Street. Money. And also uh, one Beach Street. So. That's the affordable housing. Someone mentioned water and gas. Surely you have as brand new water lines, brand new gas lines. And uh, there shouldn't be a problem as far as uh, the size of the buildings handling the water pipes. 
and I want to thank Mr. DeChico for mentioning because about the uh, parking tickets. These folks in any of these new buildings will not be able to get parking stickers or visitor permits to go and park in the local, local neighborhood. So, um, and, and it's been guaranteed by the, by the uh, developer, by Mr. Russo, that it will be in the lease that no cars would be allowed by any of the folks living there. That's right. They have cars in their leases. So that kind of uh, protects that to a point. I don't know what's going to happen if he ever sells the building, but uh, I don't, and I don't know what we can put it in as a permanent restriction. Thank you, Mr. We, we do make it a permanent restriction on it with the board. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. That's out it. Yeah, Debbie um, will take care of it. Thank you. Oh, okay. I wish I could mute microphones, Ashley, but you don't um, let me. Huh? I, I apologize. I did. I made you a host. Oh, I couldn't mute microphones because I would have been muting people for a while. Um, uh, it it don't have, let me. Um, Not a you big can also problem. see the participants list and you can see the hands raised as well, Mr. Tucker. Um, we have Danny. I, could, I, I do see one now. Yes, I did notice that. Uh, okay. Jan Dumas. We uh, already had that. Yeah, right, his and, uh, hand. Uh, That's Vanny, the only hand I see. Already. There's a resident named Vanny that has a uh, hand raised. Yeah, I don't see that one. That's on that's the attendees okay. list. You can toggle between attendees and panelists. Mr. Oh, Tuck, okay. You see that? Yes, I can. I just learned that now. Okay. All right. If you can see that, I actually have to leave. I didn't realize this meeting was going to be so long. But if you okay. can, if you can see the hands, that's how you know who needs to who wants to speak, and you can okay. just unmute them. Is that okay? Sure. All right. Good luck, guys. And no, okay. does any panelists need to share any screens at all? No, I'll, I'll set it up for screen sharing anyways. I mean, I could. I, I okay. do have some renderings I could share. Mr. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I would just like to remind you how fragile our quorum is. I would suggest that we move as expeditiously right. as possible. Okay. Is there anyone else that wish to speak right now? Just state Thank your name and address for the record. Bonnie. If you click on, if you highlight the name, you can click allow to talk. I did that. Okay. Thank then, you. Yep. Thank you. My name is Bonnie Huet. I am a resident of Revere at 44 Dehan Street. Um, and um, I'm speaking with a heavy heart because I didn't plan on speaking. Um, so I wanted to make a statement rather than to take a position. I'd like to appeal to uh, the zoning board members um, that we are in the midst of a pandemic. The Shirley Ave neighborhood and Ward 2, specifically the Shirley Ave neighborhood, has seen immense um, support by the city in the recent infrastructure improvement. We're seeing some developments by Jamie that's happening in the neighborhood that's much needed housing stock for the city of Revere as a whole. But I'm asking you, still board there? members, to yeah. can you hear me? Tell me if Please. you're having problems that you might have to leave or anything like that. OK, go ahead. Thank you. Just to please consider postponing making a decision on the request for variances or relief until we have a, a, a better handle on the city's prep, um, prepare, preparation um, and community around what's happening with the pandemic. Many of us are parents who are trying to figure out what's the next step for school and how to put their kids in school safely. Many of us are still working through the pandemic. So we're, we're living through a lot of hard times. Um, and I think we are, entertaining a question right now that isn't priority. Um, housing crisis is real. Folks are going to deal with displacement shortly after uh, the restrictions on not having to pay rent right away is lifted. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to appeal to you, humanity. I'm not making uh, for or against. I'd love for the bagel bin to come back. I appreciate smart growth development. And I stand for community and would ask that you consider that as we are in a pandemic and a housing crisis, that we hold, hold, postpone on making a decision on 
the three proposals that are related to the Shirley Ave neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wish to speak? Vani, do you wish to speak? Vani just did. He's unmuted, so if he wishes to speak, he may state his name and address for the record. Otherwise, we will move on to the next calendar item number. Michael, Vani just spoke. We don't hear him here. No, it was the, the, young, it was the young lady who just spoke. Uh, you just spoke up, Michael. Okay. All right, we can go on to the next calendar item number then. I believe you may have to unmute John Henry. If I can find him, yep. John, Mr. Bacilli, Mr. Bacilli has made a motion that we take this matter up at this time. If he would like to, what's the wish of the other members? I would like to continue on and do all three at the, so that we, but whatever your wishes. John Arthur, do you, wish, do you? Do you wish to go to a roll call? John or Arthur, do you want to go to a roll call? Yes. Uh, we could do it now or we could do it later. It doesn't matter. I would I'd wish like to, I'd like to see the other two and then go to a roll call. Okay. Michael. That's fine. They're going to take the other matters and not go to a roll call at this time. All right. Yep. All right. That's fine. The uh, next matter before the board is application A2009. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. This is the application of EB Ventures LLC, 1040, 1048 North Shore Road, Unit B2, Revere Mass, uh, requesting minimum lot size, front yard setback, side yard, rear yard, lot frontage, buffer zone, screening, parking, and maximum floor area ratio to enable the appellant to raise the existing structure, construct a three-story 18 micro unit apartment on lot 123, on the corner of Shirley Avenue and Thornton Street at 57 Shirley Avenue, Revere. Hi, do you wish to speak now or should I ask for proponents? I'll wait until everybody speaks, thank you. Are there any proponents? Mr. Chairman, it's Bob right. O'Brien, 10 Ocean Avenue in Revere. I'm Director of Economic Development for the City of Revere. And I speak in favor of the variances for approval of variances for this project as I did for the other for essentially the same reasons. Thank you. Does the applicant wish to speak or can I can go on with proponents? I, th I think you can go on uh, to other proponents and it's the, the petition. Any other proponents? Very, very similar to the other projects, thank you. Any other proponents? I have. Mr. Chairman, we have a letter to the record from David Massey, who has a property at Nine to Street in favor of this project. Okay. Um, Ann, if you wish to speak, state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Ann Steinman. I, I um, live at uh, 45 Thornton Street, and I'm managed, and I'm, I'm the property manager for the property at 111 Thornton Street. And in, um, I'm, I'm speaking against. Um, All right, ma'am, we're on proponents right now. So I'll just oh, I'm ask sorry. you to wait. I'll gladly wait. No problem. Laurel, the next person is Laura Holmes. If you are a proponent, yes, I am speak? speaking as neither a, a proponent or an or, or opponent. I'm in the Mr. under. Chairman. I'm yes. in the this is getting a bit particularly difficult because yeah. we have no. No provisions in our 
We don't. You either have to be a proponent or an opponent. All right, then I'll go on the record as an opponent in that case. Okay, so just let me continue on with the hearing and I'll ask if there's any more proponents. Hearing that I'll close up, I see Anthony Zambudo. Tony, you wish to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for all the same reasons I spoke before, but mostly because this is all part of the revitalization and I, I've said enough about the quality of the developer and uh, the track record. So that's what, uh, that's what makes me a complete proponent. Okay, thank you. Now, any other proponents? Hearing that, I'll close that side of the hearing. Are there any opponents? Please raise your hand or... Okay, Laura, you may speak. State your name and address for the record, please. Laura Holmes, 243 Campbell Avenue. And I'll be brief too, for the same reasons, I would like to put a hold on awarding variances for this project. I support the goals of uh, revitalizing Shirley Avenue. I know it to be a vital neighborhood and has been for as long as I've lived there in many, many ways. There's beautiful homes, there are residents who have lived there for generations. Um, these are things that we wanna make sure that we preserve. Uh, We've worked hard this decade before to get uh, green space, play space for the kids, things that add to the quality of life. And I just want to know that that you know among developers who are putting 95 units into the neighborhood, I want to have a chance to talk with them and see how the community how the community will benefit from the development. Um, I hope that this board. Uh, uh, of, uh, of five or six members. I hope this board will not rush to decisions uh, about this without consideration for people in the community. There are, big bin I know has a lot of support for the bagel bin, but I heard maybe 50-50 for the, for the support. And uh, it seems to me as though in the, the, the rush to develop the community, which I'm all for the development. I'm just not for the rush part because um, I, all I see involved in the process so far is the developers, the other um, business owners. I'm not trying to cut, I'm, I wanna cut you short because we're running out of time here. So um, I, you've stated what you're mostly stating now, you've stated in the last um, conversation with the other one. So if you could speed it up, I'd appreciate it. Well, hello. Yes, you muted me after you said I could. Oh, I, I didn't mean to at all. Okay. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate everybody's time. I'm going to stay and say the same thing on the next development because I think it's important that it goes on the record that there are people who are neighborhood residents and it's a voice that seems to be missing from the process. Thank you very much for speaking. Um, I believe the next person would be Ann. Hi, um, do I need to restate my uh, address again? Uh, yes, please. Okay, um, Okay. this um, name is Ann Steinman. I live at 111 Thornton Street and I'm the, I mean, I live at 40, excuse me, correction. I live at 45 Thornton Street and I'm the property manager for 111 Thornton Street and um, parking is a big concern. In my particular area, we don't have parking permits for visitors or for residents. And for any of these properties, when you have more people coming in, either as visitors, guests, customers, um, if they cannot park in a, a parking, in you know, a place we have a parking permit, the overflow is going to go on Thornton Street and other streets that are not, that don't have any um, parking restrictions as such. Um, secondly, I, I, again, I want to have, I think the community deserves and is only fair, especially the COVID crisis, to have a hearing so we can so we can feel at ease. Because right now, what I'm hearing from residents, we don't feel comfortable with this. As yet, much as we'd like to have the bagel bin come back, um, I know we're not talking about the bagel bin right now. I haven't gotten warm fuzzies yet from from this discussion. I think our questions need, to, I think our concerns need to be addressed, need to be answered. Um, and and thirdly. I'll reiterate, because there's no um, guarantee that you can provide housing for people of low income, that's excluding many, many, many people who are residents of Revere 
from being able to afford these these housings. So you're changing the flavor, the nature, the spirit, the the thing that makes Revere great is is, is being changed. And I don't want to see anything be lost in the development. I'm I'm all for commercial um, things, but I'm not in favor of the um, these these little small um, temporary housing um, units. Okay, thank you. Point well taken. Unfortunately, we as the Zoning Board of Appeals have nothing to do with the low income housing and can't make any votes on that. Is there anyone else that wish to speak? Okay, Ira. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry I missed the proponent part. Um, but I, it's mine's on the proponent part, but with uh, concerns. This is at the corner of uh, Thornton Street and Shirley Ave. And right now there's a two family house there and they want to turn this into a three story, 18 unit uh, facility with four parking spaces. Uh, but let me say in advance of that, people were concerned about Airbnb. City Council currently is investigating and writing an ordinance to control Airbnbs. And one of them is in order to have an Airbnb, the person has to live in the facility. That would be one of the requirements. So they just kind of turned the 18 units into Airbnb. And uh, my, for the parking is an issue, uh, but uh, again, the uh, developer will have in his leases uh, no cars. And uh, as far as uh, Ann Steinman is concerned, we will work on permit parking for Thornton Street uh, to make that happen over the next couple months and uh, try and protect you as much as possible. So um, there it that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Any other proponents? Any other opponents? Hearing now, we'll close that side of the hearing. Next calendar item number, please. I, I raised my hand, Chairman Tucker. With, which, who is this, please? My name is Vani. Uh, I raised my hand. I apologize. I thought you were going by hand. Um, I just wanted Vani from 44 Dihon Street. Um, and with a heavy heart, I'm opposed to this project for reasons I said before in deference for an open community process and consideration of the reduced quality of life we're experiencing. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I don't see any. I have to, I'll shut off the hand raising so I don't get confused with the next one, but uh, or, or take down your hands for now. Okay, so the next calendar item number, please. The next item is calendar item A2010. This is the application of Shirley Ventures LLC, 1040, 1048 Nausea Road. Revere requesting minimum lot size, front yard setback, side yard, rear yard, frontage, parking, floor area ratio, buffer zone screening, and maximum height to enable the appellant to reconstruct the existing structure, St. Jean's Credit Union, and adjoining property and construct a five-story mixed-use building consisting of two commercial units and 45 micro-unit apartments on lots A and 2 at 180 and 184 and 186 Shirley Avenue in Revere. Or do you wish to speak or I can go proponents? Uh, I believe you can go proponents. We'll, we'll uh, Are there any proponents? Our same comments over. Jeff. I see one hand raised and um, Jeff, Jeff you can go. Mr. Chairman, let me just go on the record first. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. I... Go ahead, Bob. For reasons uh, previously expressed, it's Bob O'Brien, 10 Ocean Avenue, Director of Economic Development for the City of Review. Uh, for reasons previously expressed and, and further detailed in our letter of support, we would recommend and request uh, ZBA approval of these variances. I might make one specific note with regard to both of these two projects. The character of Shirley Avenue is defined by a lot of things, but among the most important is what happens at the street level. And one of the reasons that we are so supportive of these projects is that the mix of uses includes <laughs> vital commercial development at the street level in this building even more so than uh, it was before and certainly uh, including uh, the bagel bin. So that mix, I think, and particularly the predilection of this particular developer to get the right kind of commercial uses for this neighborhood are the reasons why we have confidence that he will do precisely that. Thank you. 
I see Tony, you have your hand raised. Tony, you wish to speak? I do, and, and, and I'll be very quick, obviously. Uh, for all the reasons I stated before and for, the, for what this will do to the neighborhood, and uh, some of us remember uh, the building across the street that was on the corner. It was a problem for as many years as I've been on the council, and this gentleman took it over and, uh, and cleaned it up, and that's the kind of stuff that happens here. So uh, Shirley Ave is turning into a, a really uh, nice place, and, and uh, so that's why I'm in favor, and I'm a proponent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponent? Jeff, do you wish to speak? Yes, please. So, I mean, I, I agree completely with the, the other proponents that have just spoke. You know, we've had, my name's Jeff Cohn. I'm a podiatrist. I've had, we've had a business there for 60 years. I've been there 30 years, my wife and I, Carol. And, and 30 years ago, it wasn't nice there. It was really bad. I mean, you, you hear about things and, and, and now people are saying, no big deal. You know, everything's wonderful and surely have, and, and we want to keep it wonderful. But for a long time, it was commonplace, gangs, drug abuse, prostitution, arson. That's what we lived with for years. It took 20 years. It's only in the last 10 years that things have really come around and people have been interested in this revitalization. Ira talked about it for a long time, wonderfully, and, and things have improved and they've improved a lot. And, and so what we're doing at this point is, as you may know, we sold the property, but we like the area. We, we like being there. And we've done well and we're, keep, we're staying in the area. We've improved our office. It's gonna be bigger. We're closing our Boston office. We're moving that into the Revere office. And um, I think as far as, as, as parking goes, I mean, it is an issue, but I find, I don't ever remember having a patient complain to me that they couldn't see me because of parking. Many times people would complain because I didn't want to go to the Shirley Ave area but never did someone come in and say, I couldn't find a parking spot. You know, I mean, who knows what it's gonna be in the future, but so far so good. That's okay, all. thank you. That's my story. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wish to speak um, as a proponent? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I guess I'll pick up this uh, segment for my- I have uh, two hands raised, Ira, that um, okay, are attendees. Ina and Ronald, if you're not a um, let him go proponent, I'll I'll unmute you, but just please state what you're. Um, you're both allowed to talk at this point. Ronald, are you a proponent? Yes, I'm a Very proponent. Uh, I uh, I think I mentioned earlier, and I'll be really brief because I'm not going to repeat what I said earlier. But I own the property at 173 Shirley Ave, directly across from the pro proposed development and, and a lot of what I said earlier applies to this same project. The only other thing I want to add, and it's to jump off of something that Mr. O'Brien said earlier, the, the, the very street level commercial development that you're hoping to achieve, uh, quite frankly, needs some of this density in order to support them. And, and I know that that's something that's been successfully done in, in other urban areas. And so I, as, a, as a business owner there, as much as I think everybody rightfully wants to make sure that you get the parking piece right. When you bring this type of transit oriented development, you bring customers for a lot of those businesses that let's face it are going to rely upon that foot traffic and not the old vehicle traffic of 30 or 40 years ago. So again, I'm speaking in, in support and I just wanted to add that piece. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wish to speak? Um, yes, I do. Can you hear me? And state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, my name is Ina Tall, and I live at 100B Florence Avenue. And uh, I am an opponent. Nope, that we're doing our proponents right this minute. That, so is there any other proponents? Anyone wishing to speak as a proponent? The chairman, I'll take it if nobody else has it. Okay. Ira, you wish to speak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, this one is really, really a dense, dense location. I'm, I'm speaking on the proponent side because I, I'm still pro-development. I just think this one is over, over the hill. 
Uh, I didn't want five stories uh, with 45 units and no, zero parking. I, you know, I have a problem with that. Uh, I would like to see the area built up, but uh, in this particular one being on a fifth, a fifth level and adding those extra nine spaces and squeezing in four additional spaces on the first floor behind the commercial spaces. Uh, I have a problem with that. And again, uh, the developer wouldn't work with me on that. And uh, you know, I just, again, I'm for development, but I'm against this particular way it's built. So, and, uh, and I'm talking on behalf also of approximately 50 other people. And here you have some of them online here today that are against this because of mainly the parking. Even though the developer, again, and I'll state, has stated that he will put it in his lease that there will be no permit parking or visitor parking passes issued to that building. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, are there any other proponents? Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Any opponents? Is there any opponents? Okay. Um, yes. Go ahead and speak. Speak um, that's listed as Iron Ovasowski on the screen, please. And one moment, please. Hi, um, Jan Dumas, 50 Walnut Avenue. Um, I'm, I'm concerned that it's just too big a building for that corner. I'm concerned with the number of units that they're trying to cram in there. And as I said before, I want I've really helped make this the kind of neighborhood people want to live in. But I want development here to be for long-term residents, not people who are only going to be here for a short time. And I don't see these tiny little apartments as being the kind of place where someone's going to want to put down roots the way I have and is going to want to stay in the community. And I'm really concerned that all of these little studio apartments is going to change what has made this a great community to live in by bringing in a large number of people who won't put down roots. Okay, unfortunately, that's not a zoning of appeals matter that we can't restrict that. John Henry, the clerk, would you? Assist? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so I can get the record straight. Was Ira? listed as an opponent he was a proponent he spoke as a proponent with okay. concerns with, with concerns. concerns and ronald i never got ronald's last name at 173 shirley ave that's hogan ronald is hogan h-o-g-a-n and i never got the the last speaker's name the I'll last speaker um it shows that up as i Please state your name and address for the record. Jan Dumas, D-U-M-A-S, 50 Walnut Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we are now going on to opponents. Um, there are several hands raised here. I will go down the line here um, and start off with Ina Tall, please state your name and address for the record. I think you may have muted her accidentally. No, she's. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, my name is Ina Tall, and I live at 100B Florence Avenue. And I am uh, an opponent because I feel like the process has been rushed. And many of the you know, community residents have not been able to participate in the process. And uh, we do have some concerns like many um, of my community members have mentioned earlier. Um, we, we feel like those units are, uh, they don't seem to be you know, uh, matching the rest of the community, meaning that they're not family oriented and uh, um, they're just going to change the fact. Okay, I have to stop this because you have to stick to the Zoning Board of Appeals matters. Um, okay. I apologize, but the the type of unit that it is, is uh, we don't go by family or long-term okay. leases. This is the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. So, so I just ask you to briefly state what your opposition is as okay. far concerned as the appeals, and okay. we have to continue on. 
Okay, so number one is yes would be then uh the issue that you know those buildings will house too many people and not offer enough parking uh number two is that the community was not you know involved in the decision making process and okay. uh, yeah well i guess i'll stop there um well it's you you stated the, the with the last two so i think we have the crust of what you were what your concerns are correct is the next person uh would be Ronald, uh, or did you already speak, Ronald? He spoke as a proponent. He spoke already. The next person, uh, I, I can't tell with all these hand raised, unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. If anyone wishes to speak, they can take off uh, their mute. And Chairman Tucker, can you hear me, yes. Chairman Tucker? Yes. This is Bonnie Hood, uh, 44 D. Hunt Street. Again, heavy heart opposed for the same reasons. And I wanna reiterate that I'm a resident of this neighborhood within walking distance to all three projects. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Hi, I'm Ann Steinman. Um, I live at 45 Thornton Street and manage a property at 111 Thornton Street. I'm opposed the same reasons as, as I stated before. But also this one, um, it, it's, the building is too high and it's cramming too many people in. So, and definitely not enough parking. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Laura Holmes, 243 Campbell Ave. Just want to go on the record opposing the project uh, for the same reasons, lack of community process, too big, too much, too many, too little parking, no process. Thank you. I don't see anyone else at this time. Um, I will Mr. make- Mr. Chairman, yes. was, Jan, was Jan Dumas re to be recorded as an opponent? Yes. Is she still online here? She's yes, an opponent. Jan Dumas yes. was Thank an you. opponent. Thank, Thank opponent. you. Anyone else wish to speak? None. Is there another calendar item? I, I just also for the record just say that Stein is staying also opposed to the lack of process for the community to get involved. Unfortunately, as the Zoning Board of Appeals, the lack of process is not is not put to us involvement. Um, this was posted. Uh, unfortunately, that's not something that we get involved with. That would be the, the your ward councilor or the developers, whatever. <laughs> It's not part of the Zoning Board of Appeals, unfortunately. I do sympathize with this. I, I understand it. I've heard it all. Um, so John, if we can go on to the next calendar item number. We're returning to, we all already took calendar item number A2011 Post Road. That's been granted. We return to A2008. A20 Eastern Equity Partners uh, to develop a five-story mixed-use development consisting of one commercial unit, 32 residential units at 207-209 Shirley Avenue. And that we would have the least restriction in there that they have no vehicles. Um, is that a condition being offered by someone? That's a condition that we offered on all of the other ones, so I'd like it to be part of this one. Yes, and that is our expectation at the uh, Economic Development Office. I believe it's included in the Economic Development's um, standard letter, letter the, the letter that comes to us. Mr. So Chairman, when, question. Ira? Uh, is it proper to include the no visitor, uh, no permit parking and no visitor parking? That's a we zoning, no, but that, it's we already no there. authority over that. We have no authority, but it's already there. That is the case already, Ira, as you pointed out, so. Okay. We'll include the letter from the uh, Director of Economic Development in all of these applications. Thank you. Question comes on granting the relief requested by the appellant. Roll call. Mr. Vichilli. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Vichilli votes yes. yes. Mr. D'Angelo is absent. Mr. Lopes. Mr. Mr. Lowe, Lowe. Oh, yes, he was on mute, but 
You vote yes. Mr. Pelton. Yes. Yes. And Mr. Tucker. Yes. This is granted. Subject to the restrictions. Calendar on number A2009, EB Ventures LLC um, for Shirley Avenue in Thornton Street, lot 123 at 57 Shirley Avenue, Revere. Question comes in granting the relief requested by the appellant. With the same restrictions that we just noted the last one. Yes. Yes. Al, do you vote yes on this? Yes. Yes. Mr. Vichilli votes yes. Mr. D'Angelo is absent. Mr. Lopes. Yes. Yes. Mr. Pelton. Yes. Yes. Mr. Tucker. Yes. Yes. This is granted subject to the restrictions. Calendar item number A2010. At um, lots A and two at 180 and 184 and 186 Shirley Avenue Revere, Shirley Credit Union, the St. Jean's Credit Union building. Question comes on granting the relief requested by the appellant. The same restrictions as applies, yes. Shirley, uh, St. Jean's Credit Union, yes. Al? Yes. Okay. Mr. Bichil votes yes. Mr. D'Angelo is absent. Mr. Lopes. Yes. Yes. Mr. Pelton. Yes. Yes. Mr. Tucker. Yes. This is granted subject to the restrictions. No further business. Well, Ira, just one comment that the Airbnb, I believe that you're, it has to be owner occupied. So that can be stated for the record that the city council is working on that, correct? That that's going to be that you have to be owner occupied to have an Airbnb? You're, you're on correct. mute, Ira. That's, that's correct. Okay. I just wanted to make that that'll point. Be though. Part of the, uh, or, that'll be part of the city ordinance. Thank you. Thank you all. No further business. Thank Thank you, Next everybody. Meeting. Next meeting, what, June 29th? July 29th, 29th at 4 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you for participating. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.